Yeah, g'day, it's Charlie ZL2 CTM. I um I mentioned this morning on the uh, the previous video that in some of the comments that I wanted to um, turn this into a dual band radio, as well as wanting to make up a uh, a tuning function, which I think I mentioned in the previous video. So I want to cover off today uh, very quickly um, the changes I've made to the radio since uh, last night. Um, and just basically, just, you know, I provide an update. So this this part here is a um, an RC um, RC oscillator. There, it's based on a three nine zero four uh, with three stages of RC phase shift, so sixty degrees each. So six three is eighteen, one hundred eighty degrees plus the initial one hundred eighty degrees equals three sixty. Um, this was a bit of a mish actually. Uh, so by way of the uh, the circuit. Um, that's the circuit diagram there, so it's based on a, uh, a 3904 um, and like I say with 10 nanofarad capacitors and 5.1k ohm resistors in three sets of, of phase shift there. Um, I initially started off from first principles and designed this with 10 milliamps flowing through it and uh, was having problems trying to get it to uh, meet the Barkhausen criterion and, and getting that sort of um, a, a total phase or gain of, of 1 uh, and the 180 degrees. So in the end I sort of went back and sort of looked at some, some other examples online uh, and then sort of got a few ideas from that and then basically just decided to breadboard it and, um, and sort of went back to first principles and a bit of a play around. And this is what I've settled on there. Um, I wanted around 1 kilohertz or just slightly above 1 kilohertz so sitting sort of in the middle of the, uh, the audio frequency bandwidth for the filter. Um, and for a, a this type of phase, so again for this type of RC oscillator here, um, this is the formula for the frequency. So one over two pi RC root two n, where n is the number of um, RC sections. So in this particular case, I've got, I'm using or ended up using resistors of 5.1 k and capacitors of 10 nanofarads. So one over two pi RC uh, root two times three comes out at uh, one two seven four hertz. Uh, and it's pretty well split on that, spot on that, which is great, um, and a nice clean um, uh, sine wave. So I'll, I'll, I'll tidy this up and then uh, and put it up on the blog. But uh, yeah, it was interesting enough. So the quiescent current through the 3904 turned out to be uh, one milliamps in the end. Uh, and like I say, I had to put a do a play around with the biasing. So uh, R2 here of the voltage divider biasing could. Um, dual function there so it's it's also acting as R2 for the voltage divider of biasing but also the uh, the final resistor in the RC combination so CR, CR, CR so that one there so it's a dual function device that one but all in all um, it's it's turning out fine so, so the whole idea of uh, this particular device here is there's a switch here which uh, keys the radio so we see it we're flashing there now so we're keying and on the front we've got a pot so that's a um, a 50k pot which is sitting on the output of the RC um, oscillator uh, and then that provides a variable drive through to our master um, mic gain here which then goes through um, it doesn't go through the microphone amplifier there's enough uh, amplification here to then go straight through to our balanced modulator so by doing that if we can see up here on the uh, the power meter here if I slowly now increase that um, drive level, we can then start to get an increase in our um, in our power. Um, so the whole idea of that was to start low. Uh, so that's my voice coming through there. So let me just disconnect the microphone. So now it is purely on um, that DC drive there, or say again that single uh, frequency. And now we can uh, we can start at low power. We can we can tune the antenna, and then we can start to creep up in power until we get to where we need to be. So that was the whole idea of having that pot there. So it wasn't just slamming the uh, the transmitter into full power, um, but just being able to creep up the power as the uh, antenna gets tuned, and then we can come out of uh, transmit back into receive. So uh, that little circuit there is working really well, and like I say, um, the the, uh, the the drive here to to slowly increase the the transmit drive is working just fine. Uh, for interest sake, that was actually transmitting on the 80 meter band, so that was the other change I've made to the radio. I've introduced um, two sets of filters. Um, so over the back here, 
we have on the receive side the band pass filter. So we have uh, an 80 meter band pass filter here and a 40 meter band pass filter. Um, at this stage of the game, I've just selected to go with the tried and tr proven uh, switches there. So that's now selected to the 40 meter band and then back across the 80 meter band. And on the other side here on the output of the power amplifier is the low pass filter. So again, got an 80 meter low pass filter and the, the existing 40 meter band pass filter. Uh, and what I elected to do there, I've just used another piece for both the two filters there, uh, copper board, and then just use the, uh, the the machine to to mill out, um, uh, mill out the tracks to to basically um, allow that a big nice big earth plane there, and then two sets of um, filters on either side. Um, I thought that was a nice way, and it seems to be working well. Uh, the, uh, the actual power amplifier itself is working fine on 80 meters. Um, certainly no signs of instability there or taking off. Uh, the driver down the bottom here is working just fine as well on the 80 meter band. So all in all, uh, I didn't have to make any other changes to the radio to facilitate the 80 meter band. So that's good. So for all intents, of, well, it is. It's now a, uh, a dual band uh, 80, 40 meter radio. So just a matter of swapping over bands, just flicking the four switches and now into the other band. Uh, what I do need to change is uh, the software. So at the moment the software is, um, is just very basic and continuous. Um, I'll have a little push button switch here which will then just change bands between the 80 and 40 meter band. The only other thing I added in last night just for playing around is the S meter. Um, so at the moment the, the output of the AGC which is this little white wire here. So the AGC amplifier is down the bottom here with the white wire coming through to our AGC on off switch. Uh, I've just taken a very basic tap off that which is going through a little voltage divider bias there. So it's a 470 ohm and a 1k ohm resistor uh, which then drops down our maximum of 7 volts down to an acceptable 5 volts for inputting into the, uh, into the Arduino. So 7 volts is our maximum uh, AGC drive and 6 volts as minimum. So like I say, just a little voltage divider bias there. And then the uh, the tap of that voltage divider biasing there is then going into the analog pin. Um, and at this stage of the game, haven't really thought too much about the code for that. So at the moment, uh, every time it goes through the main control loop, it reads that value. Um, and then it's doing a, a 10 loop sample. So every 10 times through the loop, it then does an average over the last 10 uh, samples and that gets displayed on the uh, on the display here. Um, and then in the software it's just a very basic um, if loop there. So if the voltage is between a certain range, uh, it will output S123456789. Um, uh, and I did, a, I did a very basic calibration uh, for that just using the commercial rig. Just uh, got the signal oscillator out and then just creeped up um, some levels and then uh, made sure that this display here matched what the analog display was showing on the um, on the commercial rig. Um, is anybody interested? Please leave some comments in the uh, in the notes if you'd like to see this display swapped out for say a larger um, graphics display um, to do something. Um, otherwise, what I was thinking about doing was just sticking with uh, this two by sixteen. Uh, but introducing um, some extra functionality. So what I was thinking about doing was memories. Um, I find memories quite useful because certainly on the 80 meter band uh, there's a couple of set frequencies for some various nets. So it'd be quite useful to have uh, a memory switch here to switch between, uh, pick a number, you know, one, two, three, four, five preset memories. I thought that'd be quite useful. Um, I personally don't use or haven't, well, I used to have a, a um, what was that? It was Yezu 757 GX2 many many years ago, and that had two VFOs. But at the moment, I don't have uh, any commercial rigs that have two VFOs. Um, I, I, I personally don't really need it, but if somebody thinks that might be useful, then I can certainly look to code that in. Um, the other thing I was thinking about doing was a scan function. So over here we've got that AGC coming in. So I can't see any reason why. Um, if the conditions on the band are such that we couldn't start a scan and just start scanning through the frequencies and then um, as we're stepping through we're checking the voltage coming through on the AGC. So theoretically if you hit uh, 
a signal, then the the AGC voltage should jump up, and then we should be able to stop the scan function. So uh, that might be some functionality to add on in due course. But anyway, um, like I say, this was just uh, the whole idea of this video was just a, a quick update on um, the changes I'd made to the rig today, uh, enjoying my Christmas break, um, and uh, and just sort of coming up to speed with um, with you know, the two the two filters over there, the band pass and the low pass filter. Um, and then the, the RC oscillator there to facilitate uh, tuning the radio rather than having to whistle into the microphone. Um, the other thing I did too was just repackage this, had an old microphone lying around, so rather than sort of hand holding that electret, I've now just dismounted in here. It's like the same cable as before, it just uh, looks a little bit better than just the microphone hanging there by itself. Okay, Doke, well, I'll, uh, I'll say 73s there. Um, and any other functionality just uh, to sing out, but otherwise I think I might shift the attention to some software changes and um, look to uh, to make some changes on the software. Anyway, I'm starting to ramble now, so I'll say 73s, and uh, we'll catch you next time. Cheers all.